Hi, good afternoon everyone. It's Tom here from Running Physio. Um, I wanted to come on and have a bit of a chat about uh, the situation we're all facing at the moment and how we can plan for after coronavirus. Um, I also wanted to make myself available and do whatever I can to help you. So if there's anything you think I can help you with, uh, perhaps setting up your online services, uh, or perhaps you've got questions about how to do online consultations, um, anything like that, please do ask in the comments. I'm more than happy to help, uh, and I really want to focus on doing as much as I can for everyone at the minute. So any questions about how you can make your changes at the moment, please put them in the comments. I'll go through afterwards. I'll do my very best to help everyone. So as I said, this uh, video is going to be about how to plan for after coronavirus. And I think a lot of the things we do now will shape how uh, we actually come out the other side of coronavirus because there will be another side to it. And I think at the minute, whilst everyone's in the same boat, we're all in it together, it's, it's hard to see that we will come out the other side. You know, in a few months time, hopefully things will have calmed down. A lot of the measures will be relaxed and we'll be in a position where we can be relaxing with friends and starting to get back into life again. And when we're getting back into that, I want to make sure that you're in a position that your businesses, your private practices, whatever it is that you're doing to help patients can come back nice and strong. So that's what this video is about. And it's also about, you know, where do we focus, you know, our attention at the moment? And I think actually by looking after your patients and your community, actually, you are going to be safeguarding your business. And I think that's an important thing. We can look after our businesses and our community at the same time. And often the two are intertwined really nicely. So the first point I want to make in terms of looking after, um, you know, your physiotherapy future um, and your future as a clinician right now is to look after the people close to you in your community. So that means looking after your patients, um, check in with them, send them a quick email, ask them how they're getting on. It doesn't need to be about trying to get them to book an appointment or, or any, you know, any type of sale. It should be about that human connection. How are you? How are you coping at the minute? Is there anything we can do to help you? Particularly those vulnerable patients that are isolated, why not drop them a quick email or give them a call? Um, remind them that you're there to support them at this, which is going to be a very difficult time. Try and support your staff too if you employ staff. Bear in mind what their, ne their needs are. Um, we employ staff that we're very much trying to look after through this difficult uh, period. Um, so I think there's a lot to be said about looking after your people, you know, your patients, your staff, your friends and family and your community and seeing what you can do to help each other, because that's going to connect you strongly to the people around you. So when you come out the other side of this and you will, those are the people that will want to come and see you. Those are the people that will be saying how fantastic you were to support them during this time. So I think there's a lot of good that we can do in looking after people that will actually help us further down the line. And you know what? If it doesn't help us further down the line, it's not the end of the world because at least we know we've helped people in our community. We've helped offer support for them. So that's the first point I want to make to you. If you want to look after your uh, practice and your business going forward, look after your community. It will pay back definitely a little bit further down the line. Second point I'd like to make is now is a great time to connect to your ideal patients. And by that, I want you to have a think. What are the patients that you really love seeing? You know, those patients where you, you see them in the waiting room or you see their details perhaps from the book and you think, ah, this is going to be a good one. This is the type of person I love working with. For me, it's runners, it's athletes, people that are desperate to get back to their sport. That's what I love. I love working with patients like that. So now is a good time to connect with those ideal patients. So can you start offering some help to local sports groups? Could you be messaging uh, running clubs, athletics clubs, um, whatever it is you're, you're into? Um, you know, you could look to see if there are already groups online for these specific conditions that you love to treat. Start to connect with those people. And again, make it about service and not sales. Like, what can we offer them? How can we help them to showcase your knowledge and your compassion um, and not look for, to make a quick buck of it? It's not about that. It's about supporting people. 
And then hopefully, again, it gets paid back further down the line because you'll be the person they'll want to turn to when we come out the other side of it. Now, um, we're looking now to connect to, to sports clubs and things around us. We're going to be messaging lots of runners uh, that we know, and we're going to be offering uh, lots of different ways in which we can support them. And there's lots of ways you can support them. Why not embrace some of this new uh, technology and do uh, an online meeting for them to, give, uh, to ask their questions about injuries or do a presentation online for them, showcasing some of your knowledge and giving them some information? There's going to be a lot of people out there desperate to try and stay active and you can support them in doing that. So that's my second point. Try and connect with your ideal patients and look to do it by offering them services at this stage and supporting them at this difficult time. Now, if you're wanting to do this, if you're wanting to um, perhaps set up a Zoom meeting or anything like that, and you're not sure how, again, this is where I'd like to help you. So if you don't know how to do it, put some questions in the uh, comments and I'll be more than happy to help. What I'd like to do at some point is perhaps arrange a Zoom meeting for anybody that wants one because you can have a lot of people in a Zoom meeting. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments and what we can do, set up a Zoom meeting and you can see firsthand how it works. Um, I can take you through uh, how I do some of the online consultation stuff. We can have a good chat and support each other in that environment. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. It's a very versatile thing. There's lots of different uh, options out there beyond Zoom, lots of different ways that you can do this uh, where you can connect and support other people, particularly those that are isolated. So the point so far, we said look after your people. We said try and connect and support your ideal patients. Point number three is build yourself your dream team. Now is a great time to do this. A lot of us are stuck at home um, looking to connect. So by your dream team, I, I think I mean, what is the team that surrounds you? Do you have a really good podiatrist that you can turn to, a good strength and conditioning coach, a good running coach, a good sports physician? Um, do you have that team of professionals around you to support you and to support your patients? And I think for a lot of us, the answer is no. We're isolated uh, in our clinics. When we come across a, a complicated or difficult situation with patients, we don't necessarily have people to turn to. Now is a great time to connect with those people. So be actively look out in, uh, you know, in your community for people that are on the same wavelength as you. I feel very lucky because I've got a fantastic um, podiatrist, Lucy, that I can turn to, or Ian up in London. Um, I've got a great uh, coach in uh, John Feeney, who's a fantastic exercise physiologist that I can work with. We work with strength and conditioning coaches like Brendan Hayes and sports physicians like Nick Webborn. We've got a lot of people in our team that we can turn to. So I'd encourage you now, use this opportunity to connect with those people, um, and then you can work together going forward. And you know, a lot of these things are interlinked because one of the great things about these online consultations and online meetups is why not offer a multidisciplinary team meeting? Why not set it up every couple of weeks where you get your team together and you discuss these complex cases together, share ideas, learn from one another? Because everybody wins in that situation. You win because you'll learn a lot from them and they win because they'll learn a lot from you as well. And the patient wins because they get some integrated multidisciplinary care, which is really hard to come by. And you know what? Those people that you connect with will become your friends potentially, and they also become a source of referrals for you going forward. So it's helping to maintain your business as well as improve its quality, which is a real win-win, as I said, for everyone involved. So recap what we've said so far. Look after your people, so important. Look after your community, number one priority really here. Two, connect with your ideal patients. And three, see if you can form this dream team of multidisciplinary uh, uh, professionals that you can work together with. Number four, now is a great time to develop new services that you can offer. And these may well become services that you, you can continue to offer long after this situation has ended. So now is a good time to try and really develop your online consultations, 
your online classes. Um, and these can be surprisingly popular. They're not a poor substitute for face-to-face. -face. They're actually a really good service to offer in its own right. Uh, Georgie uh, at the Physio Rooms is doing a fantastic uh, set of Pilates classes. Just getting lots of people involved, um, doing the exercises from home. And actually, a lot of people are feeling back that they're enjoying the fact that they have to go out, they don't have to park, they don't have any of that hassle. They can do it all in the comfort of their own home, um, and it's a great service to offer. So now is a good time to develop these services. And again, I want to help you. So if you've got any questions about how to do an online consultation or how you might run online classes, put them in the comments. I'm more than happy to help. Uh, we can get together through a Zoom meeting, as I mentioned, and go through some of the details. So now is a good time uh, to develop their services. Um, the other thing I was thinking is, I'm sure a lot of you as clinicians will have had that situation where a patient cancels last minute because they can't get to you uh, they're stuck in in work or they you know they're, they're stuck at home with uh, child care problems or something and it creates that that problem that we all have in that especially if you're working in a private practice you have to charge them really because the business needs you know needs that revenue because none of us can survive um, if we don't have revenue coming in but if you're like me, you hate doing it because you're charging them for a service you haven't been able to deliver. But that's a great situation where we can say, okay, you can't get to us. Let's jump on an online consultation. We can set it up in two minutes. We can do all the key things we were gonna do in the session. You don't miss out um, and we actually can deliver a service from your home. So there's a lot of versatility uh, in these online services. And I, th I really have a sneaky suspicion that after this is all over, we might find a much higher percentage of our patients are gonna be using these online services and choosing not to come and see us face to face. Because if you think about it, if you really think about what are the key things you deliver in a session for a patient, the things that you really think make the difference, they're things you can do online, things like um, reassuring them and educating them about their pain um, and helping them to understand their condition. Uh, there are things like uh, identifying the right level of activity for your patients, identifying their goals and building up towards those goals. Um, there are things like problem solving. I think that's one of those things that really does help people a lot when you can talk through and problem solve a pro uh, an issue for someone. So a lot of those things can be done online. And with the software that's out there now, things like Rehab Guru, uh, PhysioTrack, there's lots of different ones out there. You can easily do exercise prescription online too. So I think there's a lot we can offer in those services and now's a really good time to develop them. Point number, oh, I'm losing track now, I think we're at number five. Don't neglect your CPD, your professional development at this time. Um, this is a good opportunity if you're finding some time on your hands to work on your CPD. And again, if there's anything we can help with with this, put it in your comments if you've got questions or anything like that. Uh, we'll be doing our usual stuff of sharing things like research papers, infographics. We've got a nice uh, running resource page that we put together in, uh, with Clinical Edge. So we'll be getting those things out there. But if there's anything in particular you'd like to know more about, put it in the comments, fire questions at me, because uh, I want to help you guys. Um, it's also good to think about what are your development needs at this point? Is it around developing these new services perhaps? Or is there a particular area of your practice that you feel actually you wanna develop? And now's the time to sit down and plan and work on that. So when you come out the other side of this, you can offer an improved service because you'll have dealt with some of those learning needs. Also, I think we wanna be aware that we don't get rusty in these situations and that's why I think it's important to keep some kind of connection going with patients particularly the online consultations because if we go a long time in this isolation uh, environment we've got at the moment we're two or three months down the line you're going to feel a bit rusty coming back into clinic so keeping those connections going can be really valuable. And actually this week, um, we've had uh, you know some really full days seeing people with uh, the online consultations and I felt they've gone really well. And I've been really happy with what we've been able to offer people there. So I don't feel I'm gonna be rusty when we come out the other end of this. The last point on here then is try and see the bigger picture here. I know those of you that are you know working in practice and running your own businesses and things, 
there's so much work that goes into that. I mean, I completely understand. It's the same, same for us. You know, you put so much into it. There's a lot of long days. There's a lot of hard work. You've really worked to build a list of people that you that trust you, a list of patients that keep your business going. Um, and it is so hard uh, at this particular point in time to seal that potentially going. But I think if you follow some of the stuff we've talked through here to support people that will all come back afterwards and i think there'd be people that are very keen to come in um, and uh, see you again once we get out of the other side of it and i do think we want to see the bigger picture here uh, and the bigger picture here is to to look after the vulnerable people um, to make sure we protect ourselves and others so we do all the right things we need to do stay home you know, minimalize the risk of spread and do what we can to support our health services. So um, looking after ourselves, looking after others, using those online consultations perhaps to reassure people who might otherwise end up going to see a GP who's already under a load of strain or might otherwise rush off to A&E because they're worried about something that actually you can manage online. Um, and there's some good uh, stuff going on out there. People like MSK Reform, Jack Chu uh, have talked about this. They're looking at how best we can support each other at this stage. So I do think, think about that bigger picture as well and recognize that this point in time is stressful but it is only a point in time and we will come out of it the other side and we'll come out of it better I think um, and hopefully having learned a lot of new things and a lot of ways we can support each other. Okay so thanks everyone that's tuned in here I'm just going to recap those points again I think we have six all together so first one look after people particularly your community and those that are vulnerable Second one, connect with your ideal patient. Third, form a dream team of like-minded professionals around you. Fourth point, look to develop these new services like online consultations. Fifth point, keep your CPD going. And the final point, number six, think about the bigger picture here. And I think if you try and do that, that's gonna help you to plan for after coronavirus and you can come back stronger, connected to your community and able to offer a really fantastic service with a team around you. And if that's the case, everyone wins in that situation. So please, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. If there's any way that you think I can help you with this, particularly the online consultations or the CPD, let me know. I'll be looking at those comments later and I'll look forward to chatting to you again soon. Okay, bye for now.